My name is Itai and today we're going to learn how to get started with Bit and Model Federation to build your uh, microphone and platforms. So in this session today, we're going to first go over the basics on what Bit adds to an existing or building a new Model Federation based microphone and platforms. After that, we go over a quick getting started and eventually we're going to the showcase a complete solution built with Bit and Model Federation. Uh, so you'll have a better understanding exactly of what's possible and how things operate. Now, as we get started um, for Bit and Model Federation, there are several benefits that Bit provides here. So first and foremost, um, each of your remotes or host applications will actually be independently versioned with its own semantic version. Moreover, Bit will make sure that all uh, bundles and build results for every revision is actually being saved. So you can pull those uh, resources after the fact, use them to um, roll back deployments and you can do whatever you prefer. Uh, Bit also provides with a set of templates, shared configuration uh, for different tooling, even deploy pipelines. So you'll have a more standardized approach for your micro front -ends. This empowers organizations to rapidly build more and more federated modules. Uh, moreover, Bit adds a layer of documentation and even discoverability for all of your micro front -ends. So if you have a robust application or even multiple applications that may reuse the different um, MFEs, you'll actually have using Bit a discoverability portal that enables you to find them, read documentation, understand what's possible, what is available, and exactly how to get started with each of them. Moreover, Bit is an amazing tool uh, to build reusable and composable components, and you can definitely use that to enhance and have uh, code reuse capabilities inside your federated module platform. Bit has a unique feature called the platforms, essentially an app of apps that allows you to better orchestrate your uh, federation modules. Uh, so with that in mind, let's learn how to get started with Bit and Model Federation. Okay, so what you see here is a very basic Bit workspace. It doesn't really have a lot of things. The only stuff I've done was run Bit in it in an empty Git repository, make sure to set up my default scope for a demo for Model Federation, as well as setting up the generator with the uh, Model Federation plugin for Bit. Now with this, let's get started by creating our first remote MFE. By the way, if you want to follow all of these steps, you can find them in our documentation right here. I'll make sure there's links and everything right below. But that's essentially we're going to go over this documentation. Okay, so first of all, let's create um, our basic setup. So bit create um, modfed remote MFE. This is the first feature that we provide. Again, standardization and templates for micro frontends. And let's call it my remote. So as you see, uh, the template supports picking the right bundlers for your need, either RSpec or Webpack. Let's go with RSpec. Okay, so now that we have our basic MFE, our basic remote, sorry, available, let's see what we got. So here's in this directory, we see that we have the My Remote MFE that simply has a button to click, very similar to the Getting Started documentation on the Model Federation website. In addition to that, we also have a bit app file, and this file configures this bit component to be a model federation remote. So first of all, as you see, we pull the model federation RSpec plugin from bit. It's just a dependency. And then we'll use this to define what is the root of the application and apply model federation configuration. Now, it is very important for me to mention here that by default, bit uses federation runtime, so model federation 2.0 uh, for these things. And the entire API and set of those capabilities and those configuration is exposed for the plugin. All right, so let's start by running this um, small application. So first of all, we can do bit at least. Okay, so we have our remote here, let's run it. We do bit run my remote. Okay, so bit automatically assign a port and we see that in localhost 3000, let's refresh, we have our button here and simply how it works from the implementation. All right, now that we have this running, we want to, uh, even, even before we create our host application, you can actually benefit from Bit already here. So imagine you'd build your first remote. If you have already a model federation system, you can build this first remote in Bit and then just use it in an existing federated application. There's no need to have the host application in Bit as well, because as you know, the composition between federated modules happens in runtime. But for the sake of this demo, let's also create a host application using Bit. 
there's a dedicated um, template for that as well. Not bad. Okay, now that we have our host application uh, here as well, we actually need to stitch them together because the templates are not aware of each other. So first of all, we'll go to the my host uh, component or application and we'll find the bit at file. Now, as you see here, this is the mode federation configuration for this remote to be aware of the my remote that we created. Right, so we see the name of the remote here and what it exposes, but here let's just change this to my remote and Again, my remote. You see here that it automatically, um, in regards to stitching together the MFEs, we'll talk about these ports a little bit later. There's one last piece which we'll need to edit as well. We'll go to the entire application itself. As you see, we are using Federation Runtime, uh, but the name of the remote is not the same as we have here in this template. So let's change this to my remote as well. Okay, so now we have both a remote application and a host application. Let, now we want to run both of them to see how things are stitching together. And first thing we see is that the host application expects to find the remote on localhost in port 5001. Okay, so let's get started by running our remote and let's put, um, set it up with port 5001. So bit run my remote slash slash port 5001. All right, we have our remote running. Let's go back to our browser and on port 5001, we see here that we have our application. Right. So next thing we want to run the host application. So let's run bit run my host. And if we don't assign the port, it gets the default port of 3000. So let's just do that. All right. Now we have a second server running. And if we go back to port 3000 and refresh, and once I click, click on me, you see that this button was clicked from my host. So effectively now we have a very small and um, light model federation remote and model federation host connecting each of these um, Hosts and remotes is a, its own bit component. So I can version them, I can uh, publish them, I can deploy them if I want, but again, we'll touch this just a little bit later. What happened? Okay, so I have like a more streamlined developer experience, right? I just want to run the entire system in a, in a dev server, and I don't want to start fussing around of assigning ports and setting them up. For this, bit provides an interesting wrapper called Platform. Platform is a simply an app of apps. Let's create a module federation platform for our system. All right, we have our platform ready. Let's see exactly what was created. As I mentioned, a platform is effectively an app of apps. And this is how you, it looks like. So first of all, what we want to do is we want to import the host application and remote application as we have defined them uh, in our project. Okay, now that we have both our host application and remote MFE set up, and we have our main setup for front end and the list of services, we can, we can go ahead and run our platform. Okay, so behind the scenes, what we did was actually running both services in separate um, servers, one for the remote, one for the host, and making sure all ports and paths for host names are stitched together. Let's see exactly what happens. So let's first go to localhost 5001, and we see, in fact, that the dev server is running, and we'll go over back to port 3000, refresh, and we see that again, we have everything here. So what we learn here is that platform allows us to stitch together the different uh, MFEs without much fuss of development um, configuration or anything like that. It's important for me to mention at this point, and I'll show that later in a more a, a complex example, you don't have to have all remotes or all hosts in the same workspace for this to work. It is enough to simply depend on a bit component that exposes a remote MFE as like that in order to build this to the array of services and for B to be able to either run 
a local uh, dev server for it or patch the uh, remote model federation manifest from a deployed video of your choosing. And we'll talk about deployment in just one bit. See a more advanced application deployed. So let's go back here. And we have here the BitBazaar application, in this case, uh, deployed to Netlify. Uh, it has two MFEs, one for blog and content, and another for store management and others. Uh, the entire application is a model federation host, and each of the areas here, each of them is a federated module, a remote, independently deployed. Another, and we spoke a little bit about documentation discoverability, the BitBazaar organization um, uses Bit to have share and uh, reuse their components. And you see here that each team does not only have a repository, but they also have a scope in Bit. And in its scope, they can maintain discoverability for their components, how to use them, etc. So let's see what the blog team did. Blog team has about eight components. They are all discoverable, all available to find here. And you can actually see that they have different entities, uh, context providers, uh, different hooks that they can even share and their pages. Each component has its own dedicated documentation, even a change log. Uh, you can see the graph of what it depends, what things depend on that, and you can better understand how the entire platform is structured. Okay, last but not least, let's talk a little bit about deployment. There are two ways to deal with deployments uh, for um, either remotes or hosts uh, for model federation in Bit. The first thing to understand is that Bit does not deal with hosting your remotes. You are required to bring your own hosting provider, whether this is a, any cloud provider like Google, AWS, Azure DevOps, or anything like a more modern one like Netlify, Vercel, and other uh, front-end facing uh, hosting providers. So uh, the first uh, way we can think about deployment in Bit is pulling the bundle artifacts from your Bit components down to uh, your local environment or to a CI system and ship them as you would ship any other bundle. For this exactly, we have the Bit artifacts command and let's use that to actually get all the resources from our blog Bit. So we can do Bit artifacts blog, that's the name of our MFE. And we, I already know that uh, the build artifacts are structured inside a specific area called build application task. So we're gonna pull this. Okay, so as you see, we have all of the generated artifacts from the build task, but we want to get it to a external folder. So we'll add the out deal option and we'll call it uh, blog MF bundle. All right, so we have here a new directory called blog MF bundle with all of our artifacts and we can just ship this to be deployed. The second option and something that can be more streamlined and even more lightweight for most of developers and even standardized deployment patterns, every MFE, every remote, every host that has the bit app file as a plugin also supports an optional deploy function. This deploy function essentially allows you to provide any custom JavaScript functionality it gets in full context the entirety build artifacts, versioning, and all information done uh, to deploy. Uh, there are several pre-built deployers that we already built and maintain, but you're more than welcome to build your own deployers. Essentially, ship your bundled artifact to any server you prefer. That's an, uh, this way, as part of your standardization for creating components or creating MFEs, you can simply have a deployer as a separate application, or sorry, as a separate um, plugin that can be used by any uh, consumer, just pass in some uh, configuration to it and run the complete deployment. In this case, we are using our basic uh, Netlify deployer, passing in some you know, the, uh, access tokens and different uh, configuration for the site, and eventually pass this to the deploy function at the end. This way, doing bit tag, bit snap, and other commands, we will get a, a full deployment of this application. Okay, uh, so with that in mind, let's go back uh, to our main documentation and see what we've gone through. So we started over understanding what are the benefits of using Bit in Model Federation. We got started about creating a remote MFE. We saw that we can actually start using the remote MFE already in existing hosts that we have. We also created a host application and then we configured a local host and local remote to run together. We then spoke briefly about deployments and then we also created a single Bit platform that allows us to stitch together Applica uh, host applications and remote MFEs that are maintained by different teams under the same roof 
So this makes it a lot easier for us to build a nice development experience as opposed to running each individual server separately, actions and configurations and otherwise. Uh, so thanks so much for listening. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out either via Twitter, GitHub, uh, or our Slack community. And uh, have a wonderful day. Thank you so much.